like this, isn't it? That's four fifty points. Thank you very much indeed. Do you know exactly where you're going? Yeah, no, sorry. Cheers. Thanks. There's a convent not far from where I live that I've been going to for about um, the last five years now. Sometimes for a few days, staying in the guest house. Uh, and more recently I've been coming here about one day a month. And, and all this time, I was, I've always found being around religious sisters really helpful as if I needed to spend time with them because that somehow helped me in what I felt I was being called to but all this time I hadn't quite um, I hadn't necessarily felt I was actually being called to religious life myself but I just knew that for whatever reason I, I've always felt this really strong affinity with religious sisters and I've always felt that they somehow understand the inside of me um, more easily than my friends at church and I've just I've always felt that I used to be here for quiet days a month but um, I can have lots of quiet at home but what I found particularly helpful about coming here as well as the, the change of scenery being helpful and being in this setting being helpful it was specifically being around religious sisters that was so important to me so it's interesting how this is all um, panning out and I'm really excited to tell them um, what, what, are, what the next step seems to be that I might becoming, be becoming a religious sister myself with a different community that they, that they know and that they're friends with. I can't wait. I will Hello again, it's now the day after and definitely a hot chocolate and blanket kind of evening. Uh, so yeah, yesterday I spent the day at the convent nearer where I live, the one, not, not the one I'm going to be joining as a postulant, but the one that I've been going to for the last few years, usually one day a month. And this was my first time going there um, in this new situation of um, becoming a postulant this summer and all of this has happened quite the, the discerning that I might be called to religious life after all having spent so many years kind of trying to be a nun at home or or something like that and having spent years reading about religious life and, and hanging out with nuns it was my first time yeah going in this kind of situation so I was able to speak to uh, my spiritual director and I was able to speak with um, a religious sister about religious life more um, intentionally if that's the right word or, or or talk about religious life in the context of the fact that I am actually going to be becoming a postulant this summer. I'm going to have to do a video explaining what the word postulant means but I'll leave that out of this. Um, and it was, um, in all of this, I mean, these videos are just me trying to share my own journey or this part of my journey with other people in case it's useful to you because I just hadn't seen so much um, on YouTube or, or so, much, so many documentaries that were following someone during this part of their journey that they tended to be following people once they were in religious life. So I just thought this might be useful. So, I mean, I'm just trying to share what what I've picked up from all that I've read and learnt from from sisters myself, but obviously I'm no expert at all. And in all of this, really, I'm I'm just an embryo that might not make it. Um, whereas yesterday I was I was able to talk with real religious sisters that that have found it was their vocation, and and, and some of them have been have been living like their their life vows for quite a few decades so i really was speaking with the the people that 
that know how it is, like the experts. And I found that really useful. And just talking yesterday, um, I was made to, or I was reminded of how how be being a postulant really is only like an initial discernment stage. And I found out yesterday that on average, only about a quarter of the people who become postulants actually go on to to make life vows. So that that put things into perspective for me. And but then I was assured that if, if it is what you're called to, then God's grace helps you through the difficulties and, and you do somehow experience the joy um, in the midst of, of living a life that you're basically choosing or, well, you're, you're responding to God's call, aren't you, more, more than choosing, but you're, you're living a life that, that completely goes against the grain of our human nature in so many ways. And yeah, we were talking quite a bit yesterday about how, um, how, how it how it's lack of choice and lack of control over your own life that can be what one of the most difficult things about entering a community, a religious community. The other thing we were talking about or thinking about quite a bit yesterday was how entering religious life it is a profound. I mean, for all of us. Christians, God's trying to trying to heal us or save us or from our egos or um, help us die to ourselves like more and more, and that, that's obviously a lifelong thing. But I guess being in religious life it makes that process more intense, for want of a better word. And we were talking about how in entering a religious community, your your ego is kind of de deconstructed and then God's reconstructing you in a, in a better way. And I was thinking about that over the weekend, actually, because when I was with a, I was with a six year, I was with my friend who's got kids and, and I was playing Lego with her six year old and one of his lego models had got a bit broken and he just said to me oh no worry we'll have to like take it all apart and, and and rebuild it again and he asked for my help in in rebuilding this model and at that moment i felt god was speaking to me through this six-year-old uh, and i realized that this kind of was a a metaphor for what happens to you when you enter religious life which um yeah doesn't sound the most comfortable of things but i guess it has to be that way and that that's I guess all Christians could can relate to the need to allow God to do that in our lives but um the the, the image that I was given yesterday by one of the religious sisters was how sometimes all the the rules and the obedience that's required in religious life can feel like a straitjacket but actually it's more like when you've say had an operation to correct your bones or or you you'd broken bones um the the plaster cast or the um i can't remember the word for the yeah like let's say the plaster cast it, it might feel like a straight jacket but it's actually the thing holding things in place until your own body sets correctly um so i i found that image very useful and it all related to what we're in the middle of Lent and so we had the one of the passages from the Bible that we had during one of the small services in the day was about how no discipline feels pleasant at the time but but afterwards in hindsight you, you realize all the good that that God was doing through it so it all kind of that that all related to, to those that those Lent as it were readings about how how we need to go through all of this and how, yeah, there'll be lots of things I'm sure about religious life that are very painful at the time or, or that are just a struggle, but I know that it's for, it's for the better, like not just for me or, or for 
the individual people in religious life but I'm sure the, the idea is that all of this that God's doing in us it's is to make for a better religious community and a better team and, and you being a better team member and you being more useful for, um, in the world and yesterday just re reminded me that what am I trying to say that there's nothing I think sometimes people look at religious life in a kind of r romanticized way but where is it it just brought home to me the 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 grit of it like the the yeah that, that's the kind of word I'm looking for um j just like I, I love Teresa of Lisieux and reading her autobiography and reading about her and people say the same about her that, that on the surface you think here's this like really sweet um pious like young devout saint or or religious sister and um I, when you actually read what she went through and, and really read what she was saying it's actually it's really really there's a lot of darkness and suffering and yeah a lot of grit again and so uh, yeah the, the, those things that I've often felt reading Therese of Lisieux I, I also resonate with the, the grittiness I see in religious life that it, there's no way that it's an easy life and there's no way that it's a nice escape from the world and I'll do a whole a whole other video about on that subject but yeah it just it yesterday reminded me of that and again it was the people that have lived it for years and years that, that were reminding me of this it just seems like God's providence that I for the last um however long I've had her as my spiritual director that my my own spiritual director happens to be a religious sister herself so that's that's going to be so useful to me especially over the next few months and and hopefully even beyond that um because that hopefully I can still um keep her as my spiritual director but it's just so nice to to have a yeah a a group of religious sisters themselves who who I've known for a while who, who can I know that they can empathize in a deeper way than all my other Christian friends kind of what what I'm going through at the moment and what what's in store for me over the next few months and potentially longer so I feel really supported and, and as if God's given me all the the support the spiritual support structure that I need so I feel I feel very blessed.